Two months late on this tutorial, let's go. Hey everyone, uh, we're picking up right where we left off with the laser turret videos. I have no idea why this took so long to make. So yeah, let's get right into it. So here we have the hardware that we made in the last tutorial. Just plug in your Arduino to your computer and we can get going. Sorry to all of those who are expecting grillin' beans. Uh, I shit you not, my grandpa came into my shed and took them and ate them. Okay, so first things first, we need to write some code for our Arduino to be able to interpret the commands we send it uh, from our program that we're gonna write in C Sharp. So let's come into our Arduino Studios. Uh, if you don't have this on your computer, it's super easy. You just go over to arduino.com, download the software. Uh, I, I could put a link in the description for you. So once we're in our Arduino Studio, we just wanna create a new sketch. Your sketch will look something like this with these uh, code blocks already set up for you. So how about first we import the server library? So let's do that include, we do that like this, servo.h, that's all there is to it. Now we can declare a couple of servo variables for our x and y axis. Let's say servo, sir x, and servo, sir y. So now in the setup function, we can attach our servo pin. So let's do sir x, dot attach to pin 10 and we can do sir y dot attach to pin 11. So now we can start listening for serial data. So let's just do serial dot begin and we can listen on baud rate 9600. Uh, 9600 is kind of just the default baud rate for serial, com serial communication, at least on Arduino. And then a little trick I picked up, we can do serial dot set timeout, we want to set that to something like 10, 10 milliseconds. The reason we do this is if we don't, the timeout's uh, default length is a thousand milliseconds, so an entire second. Uh, so that causes like a one second delay when you send commands to, the, to your hardware. It, it's super annoying and this just fixes it. So now we're actually not gonna use the loop function at all. We have to leave it in here because Arduino Studio requires it. It's kind of annoying. Um, we can just put a comment in there. Um, but I like to use some special event listeners specific to receiving serial event. Okay, so we can type that out here. It's just serial event. Now let's actually go up here and declare a string serial data. I just don't want to um, declare it each time we get serial input in this method. Now we can set serial data. That string we uh, declared up at the top. We can set that to serial dot read string. And that'll just read out the current string that's being sent over serial connection. But Michael, what's the data structure for this serial communication we're going to use? The answer is whatever the hell you want it to be. But for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna do something easy like X, uh, let's say the X coordinate is 100 and the Y coordinate is 90 as an example. So it will send to the Y servo 90 and we want to send to the X servo 100. But Michael, couldn't we come up with a more advanced data structure such as sending byte data to shave off like five milliseconds on communication? Yeah, we could. But this isn't Lockheed Martin. The most productive thing you're gonna do with this is shine a laser at your cat, so let's, let's keep it simple. So to parse for X, we need to remove the character X and remove everything over here. And for Y, we need to remove everything over here. And let me show you how we're gonna do that. It's very simple. Okay, so now let's uh, parse our data in a couple of separate functions. So we can do int parse data, uh, let's parse data for X here, and this is gonna be taking in a string uh, let's just call it data. All right. And then we can do the same thing for Y. So now we're going to be using the built-in uh, string dot remove and string dot index of functions. So we can say data dot remove. And for that argument, we can say data dot index of the character Y. So this is going to remove everything from the index of Y to the end of the string. I don't know why that's uh, the built-in default for uh, string.remove, but it is, so. That still leaves us with that X character, so we need to deal with that. Let's do data.remove. We can say data dot 
index of x. But this is gonna remove the entire string since x is at the beginning. So we need to pass it an additional argument of one to tell it to only remove one character. Then we can just return the data and convert it to an integer. Okay, so it's a little bit easier to parse out the data for y because we only have to get rid of all the data in front of the final number. So we'll just do data.remove. Uh, and we tell it to start at zero index because that's where x starts. And then we can pass it also data.index of, we can say the index of the character y plus one. So this is gonna tell it to delete up to the Y character and just leave that number that represents the Y coordinate. And that's all for that. Now we can just return that data and convert it to an integer. Cool. Oops, it looks like I actually made a little mistake. We want one to be an argument of remove instead of index of. That's my bad. That could cause some issues for you guys, so just correct that. All right, so all that's left is to use these functions that we just created. So we can do sir x dot write, and we can write the return of parse data x past that serial data value. And then honestly, we can just copy and paste that and just change it for y, y, and that's all there is to it. All right, and that's all there is to it for the Arduino side. Just hit that upload button and you're good to go. All right, so let's get to work on the software we're gonna be using to control the robot. So we're gonna be using Visual Studios with C Sharp and WinForms. Uh, if you don't have Visual Studios installed, I have a tutorial, uh, I can link it down in the description. It's, it's really simple to get set up. So let's just go to File, New, Project. We're gonna be selecting a WinForms application. We can name this something generic like laser, like my laser turret. All right, so you're gonna see something like this. It's a pretty tiny form, it's just blank. Um, let's actually make that bigger. We can look down in the properties here till we find size. Let's change that to 600 by 600, just, just to give us some room to move around. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is add a control for serial communication. Luckily, WinForms provides something like that for us. So we can just go over in our toolbox Look up serial, and we're gonna drag and drop serial port over to the form. All right, so it's gonna pop up down there. Click on your serial. Just make sure the settings are all right for this. I'm gonna change its name to just port. And let's see, it's got a baud rate of 9600, which we're using. Uh, my Arduino works on COM port three, actually. So I'm gonna switch it over to that. We can see what COM port our Arduino works on if we come over to the studio, go up to tools, and it'll be listed right there under port. Now to access the code behind this form, we just hit the F7 key on our keyboard. Uh, alternatively, you can just right click and hit view code. All right, so now we're viewing the code behind the form. Now I wanna open our serial port uh, so we can communicate with the Arduino. We could do that in the constructor here, but I prefer to do it on the event of form load. And the shortcut to get this is just to double click on the form and it'll automatically write in this code snippet uh, in the code behind the form. So this will be fired once the form loads in. And here we can say port dot open. All right, cool. Okay, so we're gonna be wanting to send serial data each time our mouse moves on this form. So we have an event listener for that. We come over to events, that little uh, lightning bolt here, and we'll scroll down to mouse. And we can see the mouse move handler. Now just double click this and it'll auto populate just like that top one. So it would be nice if we could just send the coordinates of the mouse pointer to the servos, right? Uh, unfortunately, we have to do a little more work than that. We actually have to scale the uh, form size to the degrees of angular rotation of the of the motors here. Oh shit! Of the motors here. So why won't that work, Michael? Because of fucking math. Elaborating on that point, uh, our form is 600 by 600 pixels compared to our turret, which has uh, 180 degrees of angular rotation, which is, you know, it's the max rotation of a servo. So if we have an example point of say 500, 500, we can apply 500 to something with a maximum input of 80, uh, we need to scale it. 
So how are we gonna do that? Um, we need something called a scaling constant. Now what's a scaling constant? Honestly, I made that word up. I'm not sure if uh, that's a thing in mathematics. Some of you might know I'm really, really bad at math unless it's, a, unless it's applied like this. But a scaling constant is how much we need to scale these inputs to fit these inputs. So to find the scaling constant for the x coordinates here, hint, hint, it will be the same um, for y because it's a goddamn box. Uh, we need to take the maximum number here. So we can call that form, form x max, divide that by the maximum of the turret. So we can call that turret max. Take that, and then we apply that to the input over here. Input. That's all there is to it. So to some of you, this might be helpful, but to the others, uh, myself included, I, I cannot learn like this. I have to stare at the code. So let's get back there and see what it looks like in C Sharp. So let's actually set up a separate method for handling uh, write data to the Arduino. So write to port. This will also contain the scaling logic. Let's take in a point, um, coordinates. All right. So now how are we gonna express our scaling logic in C Sharp? Whew, that should look complicated, but it's really not. So first off, we're just calling our serial port, we're calling its write function. So we're writing whatever string is in here to our serial port or our Arduino. So inside of that, we have a formatted string. So here we can actually see the data structure that we have set up. Here's the X and the Y, and this would be the X, and this would be the Y. Uh, it looks a little complicated, it's really not. So we take our passed in coordinates and we divide it by the scaling constant. So the scaling constant is taking the size of our form, so just the width of our form, which is 600, and dividing it by the angles of rotation of the servos, which is 180. And we're doing the exact same thing for Y, and that's really all there is to it. All right, so let's just pass in the event data we get from our event listener here. So we can say, write to port, and we're gonna pass it a new point. You can initialize that with the mouse event arguments e.x for the X coordinate and e.y for the Y coordinate. And that's it. All right, so it's done, right, Michael? You just have to start it up. Use your controller on the form. Nope, you just got memed. It's got like an entire second of latency on it, and it feels like shit to control. So this is happening because we're overloading the Arduino with serial data. We're sending it constantly, as much as possible. So all we gotta do is put a limiter on that. So how about we give it 15 milliseconds between sending serial data? Uh, we can do that with a stopwatch class really easily. We have to say using system.diagnostics. All right, then here, let me just use a shortcut. I want a stop watch and we'll call it watch. All right, now we got that and let's initialize it on form load. Let's say watch is equal to stopwatch dot start new. So this is just gonna start the stopwatch from zero and it's gonna count up in milliseconds. All right, so we can use that stopwatch down here. Let's get an if. Um, if that watch dot elapsed milliseconds has risen above 15 milliseconds, then and only then will we execute this line and write the coordinates to the Arduino. Uh, of course, we have to set the watch back to uh, zero again so that we can run this uh, over and over. Dot start new. There we go. All right, so now we can just start the form up and we can go over here and wow, we get nice responsive controls. Uh, something I'm getting that you guys might get is that uh, when I go right, uh, my servo is going left. Uh, you guys might get it when you go up, it'll go down. That just has to do with the orientation of the servos. It's a really quick fix. Let me show you how to do it. So all we need to do to remedy the um, servos going on opposite direction is to subtract from the uh, maximum input value of our servos. So uh, that sounds complicated, but really all it is is, here, I'll identify which one's wrong. It's my X. Uh, so when I go right, it goes left. All I have to do is say 180 minus uh, that input and, and that's it. Now it'll work fine.
Now let's start it up again. And awesome. We can control it really well. It's got awesome responsive controls and it's super fun to play with. But yeah, I'll put links for the code uh, down in the description so you guys don't have to, you know, copy me off of the screen. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.